explosively. It started from a few publications by very specific groups about uh, uh, that happened uh, in, the, in the past uh, uh, 20 to 10 years. And from then on, the growth of the field has been really uh, tremendous. And it's going exponentially. Each year we have, we can see more publications, more information coming out, and, uh, and, and more people interested in the, in the field. Neurogastroenterology and motility deals with the physiology of the gut and mainly with motility, sensitivity in the gut and the brain-gut interactions. But the field is expanding very rapidly. So we are now dealing also with the microbiota, with the epithelium, which is the largest surface of the body in contact with the environment with the immune system and uh, the interactions uh, between uh, these systems together in uh, the development uh, of uh, certain uh, functional uh, gastrointestinal disorders such as uh, irritable bowel syndrome and dyspepsia. Yeah. When the interest in this uh, field started to, to become apparent, that was about uh, six years ago, we tried to uh, figure out what would be the best organization or structure to allow uh, the reunion of uh, interests in the uh, spread of knowledge uh, in this area. So we figured out that uh, building a section in a society that already existed, basically the uh, society, European Society of Neurogastroenterology and Motility, would be a practical way of, of approaching that. And that turned out to be a very good idea and a success. Uh, we have we created this section within a society, but as a transversal organization open to other European societies with interest in the field. There are several uh, uh, important discoveries in the last 10 years, but I think that the most uh, uh, intriguing fact is that there is a strict interaction between the environment uh, and uh, uh, the uh, uh, neurogastroenterology. Uh, so the uh, neuro and, uh, and uh, immune system, for example, uh, controlling physiological functions. For example, um, there are certain forms of functional GI disorders such as uh, irritable bowel syndrome that can uh, occur uh, as a consequence of an infectious gastroenteritis. This is uh, a clear example on uh, how the environment can affect these disorders. And the other important, I think, uh, rediscovery is the role of diet in, uh, in uh, functional GI disorders. So we are rediscovering the importance of certain uh, foodstuffs in uh, the development of symptoms in these patients. Well, we have to take a look into the history. The first event was organized by the European Society on our own, and it was a, a pilot meeting and was a big success. The objective is still we are in a growing period, so is to provide the uh, best exposure for all the uh, science growing this field. In the European Society of Neurogastroenterology and Motility, we developed a section for uh, the study of microbiota in health and disease. This, we developed that as an open section where we invited other European societies with interest in the field, like the Liver Society, uh, uh, Pediatrics and uh, uh, IBD, the Inflammatory Bowel Disease Societies, 
and they have representative in, in the board and we, the, we build up a scientific committee with representatives from all the interested fields and the interested organizations uh, with us. We, as a section, uh, initiated this meeting and then uh, the American Gastroenterological Association asked us to organize it jointly. So we in Europe operate as a section which uh, um, involves several societies, but in, 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 in internationally we have this uh, joint relation with the American Gastroenterological Association with the purpose to organize the meeting. There are several aspects that are interesting for our members. One is, for example, the interaction between the microbiota and the brain. And this will be discussed in one of the workshops today. Uh, another important uh, aspect uh, is the potential of uh, fecal microbial transplantation for uh, GI disorders. And uh, there is uh, some evidence uh, suggesting that this could be uh, also an approach for certain uh, disorders of uh, uh, motility. Uh, other aspects uh, that are very important for us uh, are, uh, for example, the interaction uh, of uh, diet with the microbiota in the generation of symptoms. There is uh, emerging evidence indicating uh, that certain fruits can uh, lead uh, to the generation of symptoms uh, through the activity and fermentation uh, of certain uh, bacterial species in the gut. So these are the most important uh, factors that uh, could, uh, could uh, help uh, uh, the people uh, that are linked to our society to better understand how to uh, understand these disorders and also how to manage their patients.